Urban planning is a field that many feel has become diffuse and ineffective. To understand how and why this happened requires dialing back to the 1960s, to the grassroots and environmental revolutions that were set off by two landmark books of the era, Rachel Carson's Silent Spring and Jane Jacobs' Death and Life of Great American Cities. Jacobs' book offered a crushing analysis of modernist urbanism and the urban renewal programs enabled by Title I of the 1949 Federal Housing Act. She accused planners, correctly, of pushing the false promise of the Corbusian superblock, of wiping out entire neighborhoods for grim high-rise towers in the park. It was a shot across the bow that signaled the end of the age of the great white planner, the autocratic and the top-down, the making of no little plans. Daniel Burnham, once planning's greatest hero, was now something of a drunk uncle. The Jacobites sought new ways of planning cities. There was a new emphasis on social justice and equity, on community economic development, on solving the intractable problems of poverty and racism. Above all, on trusting the people, the citizenry, as the main source of wisdom about their very own communities. But this did not come without its costs. Privileging the grassroots over plannerly expertise meant a loss of professional agency. Instead of setting the terms of the debate, charting a course of action, planners are today often now simply facilitators, absorbers of public opinion, as Alex Grieger has put it, waiting for consensus to build. Worse, Jacobsian principles of stakeholder direct action against big plans are often weaponized to stop good and necessary projects. There's a snake in the grassroots, it turns out, and it's called nimbyism. And this is a real hazard to our collective urban future. For who, if not planners, will advocate on behalf of cities and urban society at large? All planning may be local, but the sum of the local is national and it's ultimately global. If we put the parochial interests of local stakeholders ahead of society's broader needs, it will be impossible to build the infrastructure and urbanism essential to creating vital, secure, sustainable cities, both here and around the world.